All right. The, uh, you know, you go back and look at the tape, you know, I'll start with the uh, defensive side of the ball. I thought, uh, you know, defensively we were in position throughout the entire game. There was only a couple of calls there that uh, we felt like we had guys out of position. The biggest, the biggest factor for us defensively the other day was just, uh, you know, missed tackles. I mean, we, we, if we, uh, there were plenty of opportunities to get off the field and we, we missed some tackles. We had guys in place where they were supposed to be. So our guys did a great job with their eye discipline and, and uh, just being disciplined on their jobs you know, in the uh, throughout the game, we just had too many missed tackles, and a lot of those gave you know, and ended up being explosive plays for us. Offensively, yeah, just a lack of execution. And I, like I said before, it's not one guy here. Uh, it's it's uh, you know, it is one guy here, and then on the next play, it's somebody else. And what I mean by lack of execution, it's just you know. It would be different if uh, on each of these plays we're outnumbered and we and we can't block the people that are there. But it's more of not being outnumbered and just doing your job and executing your job. And somebody's breaking down on uh, most of these plays. Offensively, you have to have everybody on the same page. Everybody's got to get their job done. Uh, the majority of the time, if not, you have a breakdown. Usually, it's gonna it's gonna break the play down. And so we've got to get where we're executing better on offense. Well, the lack of execution offensively, I imagine given the situation with injuries and all that, you can only tear down the offense so much. So what's the, the challenge of not making it too simplistic while being complex enough to be effective? Well, it's always any any time you're putting together a game plan, and it doesn't matter whether you got all eleven starters for the, and they're all seniors. I mean, you're you're always trying to decide how much to do, you know, and you're always trying to figure out, okay, what is the the lowest common denominator, and let's don't do more than that being can handle, you know, and uh, for us to be effective. And so, you know, when you start changing out a lot of personnel and, and uh, you've got uh, multiple issues that you have to deal with, you do. You start paring it down and then you start thinking, well, we don't have enough, you know. And, uh, but it doesn't matter. If you don't execute what you have, it, it, you're not going to have success anyway. How limited is your package now compared to what it might normally be if you have a full complement of guys? I mean, I, I don't know what to – I don't know what that number. I, there's no number out there. I don't know. It's just uh, it's limited. It's just it is what it is. I mean, you you uh, again you you put together. But we've got there's enough in the game plan to be successful. You know, it's not that we're so limited that we, there's no way we can be successful. It's just execute the plays that are called and and against the defense that you see. How did Chaz grade up? He was all right. You know, it was not his best game, but it was, I mean, he's still progressing. I thought he played, uh, you know, we'd love to have that ball back. He threw on the pick, and he threw a couple others that were, uh, that, that could have been picked off, you know. And so we've got to, we got to make sure and keep putting him in, in positions where he's uh, making good decisions, where, you know, I thought a couple times there, I mean, the, on the interception, there was nowhere to go with the ball. You know, but we've got to learn from that. Don't you don't throw it no matter what. You you, you got to pull it down, and you either take the sack or you get rid of the ball or whatever you got to do, uh, or you take off and run. So you know he's still growing. He he's uh, but it was uh, you know, he played he played okay. Do you have to do anything differently with an offense when you have a quarterback, a young quarterback that's got to learn and learn for the long term in addition to what you're doing right now, week to week? You know, like do you have to be more willing to take chances at teachable moments, so to speak, or do you, do you play it more conservative? Well, you're, you're trying to never put your, your team in a position where you're going to make mistakes. So it's not like let's just go do it and live with the mistakes. It's, it's you're always trying to make sure and do what he can do and what he's comfortable doing. Is there any difference, I guess, though, the idea of getting, you know, Chaz has got this year, but also beyond that, so you've got to build for the long, you know, make sure long term he's developed. Is there any, do you handle him any differently? Than I, I'm, I mean, long-term development, I'm, that's not a concern at this point. I mean, you're not th I'm not thinking about down the road with him. I'm, all I'm doing is trying to make sure we have a plan in place that he can execute for this week. That's it. I'm not looking at long-term development. Long-term development will come, you know, over the long haul. 
I mean, over all the banked reps and everything that you get and the things that happen in a game. How is Chaz's leadership as a redshirt freshman with obviously veterans throughout the offense? And how does that kind of operate? How is he handling that? Well, I would say right now that, that uh, Chaz is, is – his, most of his concerns is about making sure he does what he has to do. You know, uh, as he becomes more comfortable and grows within the offense and things start slowing down for him, then he can worry about what other people are doing and which will give him the opportunity to lead a lot better. So who's the leader on the offense in terms of maybe, you know, motivation within the game like that? I would say right now, you know, you got, you got uh, Cam Dillard who's probably stepped up and has been the guy who's been the most vocal and the guy that's has done the most. Last week you used Anthony Ralph Williams as an example of a guy stepping up with opportunity. Tyrone Offer's got a lot more than reps the last few weeks with opportunity. He got a sack the other day. How has he progressed uh, during this process? Yeah, I think, I mean, he's really come on. I mean, he's, he's doing a good job and he's learning a new position. I mean, you know, he came in a linebacker. We move him there in fall camp to uh, defensive end, which is an, which is the position we think that he's going to really develop into, and he's growing within that position. He's uh, he's doing a great job of taking the opportunity that he gets, and when he gets that opportunity, he's making you know he's making some plays. So he's, I think he's going to be fine. They only threw ten times. You guys got three sacks today. The sacks per game are up a little bit this year. Is that an area that you see you see a lot of growth, especially since the little? Yeah, and, and, and especially in a game like that where you're not going to use pressure, you know, to, to uh, get those. Those front, you know, those guys up front are going to be up the ones that, that do it in that type of game. You're not going to, uh, you know, blitz and pressure an option football team. So, you know, I think that our guys are getting better in those areas. And then when we do and we're able to pressure, they feel more comfortable and they're, and they're, they're getting home. Is that the area or is there another area that's progressed the most since Louisville on the I would say I'd say that'd be it. That'd be it. That communication. How much can you take away on defense? Like you play well the first half when they against Georgia Tech, they run a completely different offense than against the rest of the season. What can you take away from the, that effort? Well, I mean, we're we're you know they're the guys are executing the game plan. That that's the thing. So and. Throughout that game, there's a lot of communication that goes on in that game based on splits and 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 the uh, uh, the personnel they have on the field and and the uh, uh, alignments. And so those guys have to do a lot of uh, you know tendencing out, knowing what's going to happen, and trying to project what's going to happen. And they're doing a good job of communicating that to each other. Larry, uh, Jordan Brown's receiving ability is that somewhat of a surprise? He's been that effective. No, not at all. I mean, he's a, you know, really both those guys can catch the ball really well. And, uh, you know, it's something that we've wanted to be able to do is to utilize those backs. It's uh, in some of those, you know, some of those are check downs that the quarterback knows, you know what, if it's not all there, I can check it down the back and he's got a chance to make a play, you know, if I give him a good ball. And so, and, and that's what Jordan's doing. Obviously, a bigger brother coming in on Saturday, Notre Dame coming national team what does that kind of do for your program to host a team like the Irish expectations in terms of fans like that? Oh I'm, I'm sure our fans love it you know and uh, you know it'll be great for Chapel Hill and, and it's good for everybody I mean it's uh, for us it's the next game and, and we, we've got so much to worry about within ourselves right now just making sure we're right as far you know so we don't we don't have a lot of time to spend uh, thinking about who our opponent is or what, what our you know what our opponent is but I mean, they're you know they they're traditionally a, a great program, and everybody knows that. Uh, it's a it's a great opportunity for our team. It's a great opportunity for our team. You know, I mean, to have them coming here, they're ranked uh, what are they 14th in the country, I think, or something, 16, whatever it is. Uh, you know, and very well coached and and playing really well. Uh, you know, running the ball really really good, and uh, you know, play action pass and throwing the ball when they need to. So. You know, defensively, their front seven is is as good as anybody we've played. Have you coached against Brian Kelly before? Any level? Yeah, I believe I have. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, we played there. No, Played there a few years ago. I thought it was a trick question. I was like, I didn't cover the back. Yeah, I was like, man, maybe. Made you think, right? Yeah, you did. You made me think. How does Michael Carter come along? He's doing so, fine. I mean, he's doing. He had such a big opener. Yeah. And 
you know, it's been a little bit quieter, but it's a young guy first time around. Again, you know, it's it's every rep is a learned experience for him. You know, every rep that Jordan Brown gets in the game is a learned experience for Michael. You know, and he's he's doing fine. I mean, he's he's progressing. He's getting better. You know, uh, Jordan is probably because of his experience and the in the plays that he's been making, he's getting the majority of the reps now. But that's not. I mean, that doesn't mean that Michael's not going to play or any of those things. I mean, he's going to he's going to get his opportunities, and the guy that's got the hot hand, the guy that's making plays, that's the guy that's going to get the reps. Do you have a mentor or a friend of the business outside of this program that you kind of call on? Have you given the never I, I I don't really talk to people during the season, but in the off season, I, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that I call any I mean uh, anybody that's had success, anybody that's dealt with uh, uh, types of adversity I, I like to I always like to find out what what they're doing, what uh, why they did it the way they did it. It uh, doesn't matter what the issues are, but during the season I you know, I don't. I don't have enough time to, to call and talk to people, and they don't have time to, to talk to me either. Mr. Bisky was announced. It's reported he's going to start the next game. Have you talked to him at all since he's been in the NFL? Oh yeah. Or yeah. Since the season started for that. Yeah. Yeah, I've talked to him, but I mean, I haven't talked to him since they announced he's going to be the starter. He's been wanting to be the starter since uh, the day he left here. You know, I mean, and so he's. Uh, I'm sure he's excited. I'm sure. You know, I'm. I got a feeling who he'll be. He'll be Mitch Trubisky. He'll be the same level-headed guy that he always is. He'll prepare himself and he'll be ready to go. Did you go watch on Sunday? Monday? Uh, what time's the game? 8.30. I'll be game planning. So, probably not. The Notre Dame's been pretty productive on offense. What do they do that, that presents a challenge? Well, they run the ball. I mean, they, they, they find ways to run the football. They've been very effective running the ball. So they've got to be doing a great job up front. Running backs have been very, very productive, you know. So when that quarterback can run, I mean, he's uh, you know he's a guy that can that can, you know, he's a he's a big guy that can run. And so, you know, they're uh, they're going to run the football and play action pass you.